bento box is everywhere in Taiwan. And I be tasting Taiwan railway bento boxes. We want to do something good for the environment and good for the animals. They taste like noodles. Taiwanese love whiskey very much. This is something which is special. Bandung box is everywhere in Taiwan. <laughs> Every town has their different flavor. This kind of food has much protein for the traveler. They can um, feel, feel full for a long time. Uh, near the station, there are many Bandung box stores because many travelers need to take the food on the, on the train. Here is like in the transportation industry, so uh, when pe people have the need to, to travel a long distance, so they, they start providing food. Before the 60s, they do not serve on the train. Before, th we have a railway restaurant, and then people will have to buy it and carry it onto the train. So from the Japanese colonial period, it's like the rice ball, wrapping the banana leaf, and then they take it. After the 60s, now we have the, the image of the bento. Before it was a very luxury thing to travel by train. On the reserve seating trains we would serve tea, water, towels, and magazines and newspapers. On the Wong Hai Express we even served meals. When the KMT they relocated Taiwan and then kept the Japanese away, the, the restoration day, the Taiwanese they are not satisfied with the Japanese, so they do not want to provide the Japanese style. It's actually during that time, we are looking westward. For them, Western dish is more classy. Actually, the restaurant provided both Chinese and Western style, but then like the main focus is on the Western style. And especially all the officers, like the, the top officers, for example, like Jiang Kai-shek, he preferred the Western style food as well, so that they are serving this as their main focus. During that time, uh, a lot of people migrated to Taiwan and then from different parts of the China. So we have different, like Canton or like Sichuan or whatever, like a lot of different style of dishes. I first entered the railway in 1972 and served in the catering section for 38 years. And the ladies here also served on the same train. After several years serving in TRA, now when they see the lunchbox, they feel nauseated. They do not like because they have been eating so many, and then it's always it's always a pork chop and sometimes chicken drums, but mostly pork chops. When they start selling the the bento. Originally, they only provided the 60 NT pork chop once. She brought in the, the Japanese style, the fish, and also the American style, like the rosemary chicken, and also Southeast Asian curries to the bento boxes. It's 10.58 at Taipei Main Station on a Tuesday morning. In the Taipei kitchen, they are busy preparing bento boxes for the 11.42 express train to Hawaii. The Taipei kitchen is one of six railway kitchens in Taiwan. We prepare 10 different boxes each day here at Taipei kitchen. On an average day, we prepare 11,000 to 12,000 boxes a day. And on the weekend, 12,000 to 14,000 boxes a day. I used to work in a hotel kitchen. It's a lot busier here at TRA. In a hotel I can cook during the meal serving times and the rest of the time we can start prepping the food. But here we cook non-stop. I've now with me here Bonnie and uh, Bonnie is the manager of uh, Taipei Kitchen. Okay, so for the design of the, the ingredients of the box will be the chef's respon responsibility and then we also have a nutritionist to, to like balance the nutrition value of the box. And then the manager, her main duty will be more like the strategies. So, so there are uh, three parts. The first part will be like the taste. The chef will take the responsibility of that. And also uh, the food, the safety of the food. Uh, we have a nutritionist 
on that. And then also uh, for the temperature, like the warmth of the bento boxes, we also have, have a temperature con controller. There's like a accreditation HACCP, like that uh, international accreditation. With just eight minutes to spare before the 11.42 departure, the bento boxes are wheeled up to platform four, the Taipei main station. We're now on the 11.42 from Taipei to Yilan on the east coast of Taiwan and the bento boxes are now being delivered onto the train and here they are, they're still warm and they're going to be served to the passengers. <laughs> Those that have ordered online will get those first, and then the rest of the passengers will be able to buy. And there's a selection of pork chop and also vegetable. And they're still warm. I live here. I've lived in Asia for about 22 years. I travel between Taipei and Taichung weekly. At the station in Taichung, I usually buy, buy it on Friday afternoon and eat it on my way back to Taoyuan. And it's always fresh. I, I enjoy everything. I wish it was a little bit spicier, but um, the egg's good, the vegetables are fresh, the meat's always... I've never had a single problem with this one. It's, it's wonderful. It's cheap. It's um, inexpensive is a better word because you it fills you up and um, it tastes great. It's it's always available at the train station and um, it's hot. So you you know when I lived in Japan, I was, they often have a lot of cold things that are beautiful to look at. But this one in Taiwan, it's. Um, as I said earlier, inexpensive and it's just ready to eat. Japan, the bento boxes serve cold. So she wants to real know how bento uh, still tastes good when it's cold. So um, she will travel on the, the JR lines and then go all the way to in Tokyo area. She found out that the, the major difference is that they have different kinds. Many, they, the, they have variety. Like in one boxes, they have variety kind of dish but the portion is very little. And this does not, uh, is not suitable for Taiwanese style because in Taiwan we want to have a big portion of meat and a big portion of vegetables and rice so that we'll feel full. She then studied how to make the pork chop bento and serve it even it's cold, it still tastes good. This is the bento box and it's chicken and this chicken is absolutely delicious. It's been steamed and roasted and most chicken you get in Taiwan is that, um, that steamed boil which is very tough. But this is absolutely delicious and the rice has been um, mixed with turmix. You've got that lovely yellow colour. My only criticism is the vegetables are a bit to them undercooked but that's typical Taiwan style. But and for 80 Taiwan dollars, this is really good value. Where did you learn cooking? Oh, my father and mother is a chef. Most chefs working in hotels and uh, in restaurants are training in, in schools or special universities for chefs. And Bill here is coming out of a, a chef's family. The mother and the father are owning their own restaurant. And Bill is now head chef. So here we are at South Shulin railway station yeah. and I'm here with the managers from Taipei Kitchen 
and the head chef of Taipei Kitchen and we are trying to eat those beautiful lunch boxes. They have a beautiful chicken here waiting to be at. Mmm, <laughs> the smell delicious and it's beautifully arranged. The yellow red pepper with uh, green uh, spinach, spinach is it? Or yeah, and the cauliflower. The chicken is beautiful, beautiful prepared. I love the crisp crispiness of the chicken. Congratulations. Love it. The chicken is really beautiful flavored. The skin is still reasonably crisp even after all that time it was in the box. As for the cabbage, we Irish do love cabbage. Cabbage is one of our main food ingredients in Ireland. Um, just tastes beautiful. Sorry, but I have to finish that box. <laughs> This is a pork shop and oh, I'm going to try this beautiful shop. I'm quite difficult with chopsticks. Hmm. It's unusual. Uh, we would fry the shops more, more crisp. Um, it's a lovely, lovely soft type of. Uh, pork shop, uh, just perfect cooked. What is that here? Uh, fish. Oh, you have a bit of fish. Yeah. That's a chinua fish. I'm going to catch that. Mm. It's a Swedish type of taste. Yeah, you got a sugar, a cinnamon. Yeah. You put cinnamon on that yeah. fish. Yeah. Mm. The cinnamon flavor is quite, quite dominant. I haven't tasted fish like this before. It's really unusual. Then you do have white cabbage and ov obviously you have that beautiful cooked Taiwanese rice. Again, all the ingredients of that lunchbox are homegrown in Taiwan. I got another box here now which is much similar uh, from the pork shop, only that the pork shop is slightly bigger. The difference of that box is actually what is underneath this rice is a special cooked rice it has a uh, little bit of shrimp in there mm. and the way it's spiced it's just just delicious it's, it's just gorgeous taste and I'm still astonished how well that rice is keeping warm over all the time we were traveling. Uh, it's a very sticky type of rice, but it's just delicious. So I just have been handed now another very, very interesting box. This is a total vegetarian box. Yeah, I'm going to try this beautiful uh, Taiwan monkey head mushroom and uh, This mushroom has quite a juicy taste when you bite into it. There's, it's prepared in soya sauce and also using uh, white wine. Mm. It's just gorgeous. Again, this rice tastes more like a vegetable. Like, uh, no, uh, no spices are used, uh, no salt is used, so it's quite a you just taste the rice. You can taste the rice and you don't taste many spices there. It's a different type of rice. Okay. It's an organic grown rice, I believe. All, all the boxes you handed me, they're all different type of flavors. They're just gorgeous in taste. This one is for vegetarians. There's the most fantastic mushroom in it. But my absolute favorite has to be the chicken. I love the crisp chicken. I love the box with the chicken. By uniqueness of rice is quite different with each box. There's a different flavor of rice. So I must congratulate you for producing such beautiful product.
the branding of Taiwan Railway bento boxes is very well known, like uh, especially for the people who grew up in the 60s, 40s and 50s, uh, 40s and 50s, they all know about these boxes. So it's not actually not that difficult to market it. So what have you there? You have beautiful bottles there with, with trains in the shape of a train. So I'm going to try one of those. This bottle is in the shape or uh, is the making of the Southern Taitung train uh, leaving uh, Kaohsiung to Taitung. Uh, this other bottle here is one of the most famous trains in Taiwan. This is the Alishan Railway. So it represents the Alishan Railway. And here we have the Yuman train. Kids would love that water bottle and I don't, I think they will drink much quicker that bottle than any other bottle. What a unique way to sell water on a railway. Your grandma was the first lady in Trudong yeah. to make fancy bottles. They have a kind of different um, meats and vegetables. But original, traditional, Fulong Bian Dang will not change. He will make a, a different kind of Bian Dong cases, but never change the Fulong Bian Dong. <laughs> Here I am at James Joyce Irish Bar, where we have the largest selection of Irish whiskies in Taiwan. Today, I'm going to visit the Whiskey Taste Exhibition in Taiwan. This is a very rare Irish whiskey. It's Middleton Barry Crockett Special Edition and matured in bourbon cask. I wonder will I taste any rare whiskies like this at the, the Whiskey Taste Exhibition. I'm surrounded by so many young people, so I can't believe that whiskey is being liked, but by all the young people, girls and boys, and everybody likes the whiskey. Taiwanese love whiskey very much. A lot of people love to drink some Scotch whiskey, but now a lot of uh, young people, they want to try something different. So I think now a bourbon whiskey is very hot in uh, young whiskey lovers. I'm a big whiskey drinker, you know. I drink every kind of whiskey. I'm a drinker and I love whiskey, like from even when I'm not like over 18 years old, I start to just jump in this world and I start to drink whiskey and I think, oh my God, that's all I want for my whole life. I noticed that there's a lot of young people coming here. Yes, um, it's from 25 to 45. It's our main target. Makmura is the first ever whiskey distillery from Sweden and it was started in 1999, so it's quite young. And what is unique about it is that all the ingredients are from Sweden. So the barley with a very, is quite sweet compared to maybe some more famous whiskey distilleries. And then one of the most famous quality, unique quality is our cask. We do Swedish oak cask. And the Swedish oak, uh, because of the climate and also because we don't cut it down until it's 200 years old, gives a certain sturdiness to it and it gives a bit of a spicy character in our whiskey. So this whiskey is called green tea. So this is a collaboration with a Japanese green tea producer where we use their green tea and put it into our cask and then later put back our whiskey into it. Very unique in taste. You get a spicy flavor of it. Uh, the green tea is quite an interesting idea. <laughs> Why did you add the green tea? So Makmura's tagline is Explorers in Whiskey and every year they like to do a new limited edition. So they're always looking for new ways and they always, our whiskey master blender, she always been very fond of green tea. So she really wanted to do this. Is this the first ever green tea being used in whiskey? As far as I know, or anybody at Makmura knows, this is the first ever green tea whiskey. The only other way I know from distillery process using green tea is the gunpowder gin produced in Ireland. Yes. It's also produced with green tea. But I wish you great success with your, with your product. Uh, it's you. quite unique. Thank you very much. You. I'm going to try some beautiful Waterford whiskies. 
Uh, there are so many different types of whiskey that Waterford produce actually because a uh, Waterford is the whiskey distillery uh, although it's located in Ireland but it is not the triple di uh, distilled uh, Irish whiskey it is actually a double distilled Irish whiskey and it's talking about terroir yeah, the terroir uh, in, inside the whiskey so actually uh, now uh, there are two whiskey in my hand they are all from single farm yeah so this is one single farm this is another one single farm so you can really taste the terroir, the flavor inside every single farm. For until uh, now, uh, Waterford already uh, used uh, uh, over 90 different single farm. Yeah, which means in the future we may be able to taste uh, 90 different whiskey. You maybe heard uh, one particular detail. It's double distilled, not triple distilled. Uh, the uniqueness of Irish whiskies is a triple distillation. And, uh, Waterford is unique, and so yeah. far that's the only double distilled. Yeah. It's quite spicy. You know that it's not triple distilled, it's double distilled. You get a unique type of taste developing after a while. Quite interesting taste. The second whiskey is called uh, Benno Island. Uh, the uh, name of this farm is called Benno Island. It is a coastal farm, actually, so very close to the sea. Yeah, and uh, you can, uh, because the, uh, the component of this soil uh, attribute the flavor of flo a floral flavor and a fruity flavor into the whiskey. So very much, very, very much different from Bereke Kavan. Okay. Just try it. Yeah. Different to whiskey number one. Yep. It's more spicy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Uh, there's a fruity flavor yes, to it. Yes, yes, yes. And I can also taste in the far background a little bit of peat. Yeah. So it's quite a nice whiskey. I think uh, this is the maybe the thicker, second time or third time I drink Irish whiskey. And the barrel is different from sherry and American oak. It's, the aroma is very special. Taiwan beer is the nation's favorite. Twelve years ago, Taiwan beer introduced a distillery called Omar, who are producing a wide range of whiskies. I'm here with Chang Yen and Chang Yen. What do you uh, make Omar whiskey so special? Uh, Taiwan's Taiwan special the taste the and the smell in Taiwan. So uh, we want to make the. Uh, about the Taiwan whiskey, the real Taiwan whiskey. Uh, it has uh, some uh, Taiwan special, like a fruit, uh, like a flower smell. So it's a very uh, hard and very strong body. What type of cast do you use? Lychee. Lychee. Lychee, lychee casting. Yeah, lychee casting. This is, this is something which is special. Lychee casting is being used by Omar. Is it the only which, one in the world? Yeah. And this is very, very, very unique. Yeah. Uh, whiskey being produced in a lychee flavored right. Right. cast barrel. And to give the lychee uh, uh, flavors into, into the whiskey. Oh, I'm dying to try to taste that whiskey. I love lychees and this whiskey uh, gives you a very spicy initial flavor which stays in your mouth for a long time but in the background the lychee flavor develops and the lychee flavor really goes into the back of your tongue. It is an unusual, very unusual type of flavor of a whiskey. Now, uh, the main whiskey is spicy, it's, uh, it's a little bit like Scottish whiskey, it's normal, but the lychee makes it unique. Uh, fruity, very, very fruity. Yes. In the finish. Yes. Yeah. First taste is the rough spice of a, of a Scottish type of whiskey, but then as the a, as a flavor develops in your throat, uh, you get uh, the lychee flavor overtaking the original spicy flavor of Scottish whiskey. So it's quite, quite a unique uh, uh, type of experience. How do you get the lychee flavor into the barrels? We use the lychee liquor in a barrel about one year. Okay. And uh, we pull, pull, pull it out right. and uh, uh, get into the four years bourbon cask whiskey. 
uh, and another one year. Okay. One year finishing. Yeah. 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 It's quite interesting. Uh, the lychee liquor uh, combined uh, uh, by maturing in the barrel for about a year, and then the lychee is extracted and the whiskey is put into the barrel, and that creates this beautiful Omar whiskey with lychee, uh, lychee flavor. I'm here with Ali, and Ali is uh, representing the Kalagauni uh, distillery from Scotland. So I'm going to try a 13 year old. You get a spicy taste. It's a spicy type of whiskey. Unlike other whiskeys I tasted before, it's not too much of a peat in there. But uh, you can taste the double distilled. I'm here with the uh, Koval Company. Koval Company is producing their uh, uh, whiskies, their bourbon whiskies, in Chicago. Yeah. And uh, they have quite a unique taste for being a bourbon. Our bourbon uh, use a uh, 51 percent a corn uh, with 49 percent millet. Very unique taste. Yep. Unlike, unlike bourbon, uh, my father used to say the bourbon is a soapy taste. Uh, it tastes like soap. Uh, but this is anything else but soap. Uh, it has a lovely spice yep. developing slowly in the back of your tongue. Uh, it has a very nice smoothness. Uh, it is, in my eyes, the most closest bourbon mm -hmm. to Irish whiskies. Maybe it has something to do with a lot of Irish people living in Chicago. Uh, some people told me uh, the traditional bourbon whiskey is very wild. Yeah, uh, a lot of spicy because they use uh, rye and wheat be the ingredient. But uh, Kovo use millet. Millet is, uh, is uh, very sweet and a little bit sour. So uh, it will be very uh, sweet flavor in this whiskey. Here you really get a very, very smooth taste and not that typical type of bourbon taste. It's certainly uh, a whiskey which is bourbon by name, but Irish through and through <laughs> by whiskey. My first impression is actually I think Cowboy is like a uh, no, quite different bourbon from the bur other bourbon I tasted before. Okay. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, I really, really like the, the texture of this whiskey. Do you think it's bourbon? If, if you put me on a blind test, I would never think it's bourbon. It's like very different from the other bourbons, I think, but it's much better. Because for me, bourbon is like a little bit too punchy. Yeah. Not elegant. So okay. Yeah, not yeah. elegant enough, but this yeah. one is very elegant. It yeah. made me think of like really good. I, I sit it next to the bonfire and drinking some whiskey and feel relaxed and very elegant. I really love it. I am quite impressed of the different styles of whiskey I uh, taste. Some outstanding type of whiskies and uh, very surprised that countries like Sweden have moved into whiskey. The whiskey taste will be held every year. Next year probably there will be two different kind of exhibition. One still with the whiskey taste, another one I have to keep it a secret. Taiwan is one of the biggest whiskey importers in the world and I can now understand why. <laughs> About seven years ago, this whole area here was an allotment where the local people grew their vegetables. Today I'm going to a vegetarian show just across the road from here. Here at the stand of the Changri company and I'm talking to the chef Dean, uh, Dean Chen. So this one is uh, called appetizer. We use the new version of the word of salad with the uh, I tag of the uh, mayonnaise, traditional mayonnaise and yogurt and uh, I met I add uh, uh, 
mashed potato and uh, avocado. Uh, also, I use the ingredients is the um, seasoning, uh, seasonal vegetable or fruits. Uh, this one main course is our um, house made her uh, lion's mane mushroom pan fried in the sesame oil with the crispy ginger and uh, uh, seasonal vegetables. We just use very traditional flavor and to get it in the new decoration and to, to show the raw flavor for the guests. I'm just being served some some drink and some sample food. This cup is uh, smoked plum juice. Okay. It is sour. It is smoky tasting. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of smoke, and it has some vinegar in it. Vinegar. Uh, it's a it's a beautiful type of taste, and um, uh, it's also very sweet. Uh, do you use sugar in there? Or? Um. This sugar we use the uh, sugar can, sugar can, and the drink we also serve before the main course to be a palate cleanser. I'm facing here what we call monkey head mushroom, and uh, it's a very rare product and a very expensive product growing in Taiwan. This texture mm. is a uh, like a scallop. Mm. Mm. Very nice. Flavor. It doesn't taste like mushroom at all, but mm, it has an unusual type of flavor. Yeah. Mm. And it's a very, very big aroma and umami Good. in your mouth. This one is um, our traditional uh, rice cake. We use the uh, daikon and shiitake mushroom and uh, uh, soy, soy sauce and pepper to, to steam it and add a little bit of uh, sesame, sesame nuts dressing. Mm. I had many times rice cake, but this one again is unusual for you. You get the crunchiness. Beautiful rice cake. This one is like a, like a pork or the beef big paper and we use the uh, bean we, we use the bean to get the, like a um, soybean milk then we we marinate it and seasoning that uh, dry in the low tem temperature temperature then the uh, oven oven get it into the oven and roast it you get you actually get the salty flavor it's unusual in taste. Again, the spice. If the more you chew on it, the more the spice comes out and goes right around your throat. Yes. I'm here uh, with a company producing quite, quite a unique type of product. We all know that beef production uh, is very expensive. Pre beef produces a lot of carbon and carbon dioxide uh, is no good for the environment. So uh, people all around the world are trying to find substitutes to beef. And this company has found a substitute to make high fiber based beef tasting like product. We actually launched uh, two types of products. One is a burger patty and the other one is a minced pork. So overall products are pea protein based and of course they are animal free and they are also additive free. We have actually enhanced them with uh, fiber, vitamins and minerals. This is a pea based burger. Our peas are Canadian yellow peas and everything is manufactured in Taiwan. It looks like meat, it cooks like meat and it tastes like meat. We are from Yunlin, uh, there's a city called Douliu. And Yunlin is actually the agricultural uh, state of Taiwan. So uh, we have a lot of rice paddies and we sort of like establish our uh, company based on plant-based products. We want to do something good for the environment and um, good for the animals too. How do you think Taiwanese people uh, uh, react to your product? 
Taiwan is probably the second largest vegan population in the world. And if you want to see reactions, I suppose you can turn around and look for the crowd around you. Let's try this burger. The flavor is quite interesting. It really does taste like beef. You actually think you have a minced burger in your mouth, made from real minced meat. Uh, the texture is quite interesting, quite beautiful. It is not as dense as normal meat, it's a bit loose. So, but it, distur it disperses in your mouth quite beautifully, quite nice. So, it's a beautiful product. So you manufacture the pearl seed oil. Yeah. What are the special features of that oil? Pearl seed oil is different animal oil, like fish oil. Plant oil is special for vegan. I think they just uh, Asian people like uh, pearl seed oil. Uh, the Western world people uh, don't know the pearl seed is hot. <laughs> Uh, I never have come across pearl seal oil before uh, because we know omega-3 in, in, in Europe uh, with fish products. So omega-3 is a very, very good nature product for your body. Uh, but in Europe it's only known in fish products. So it is uh, new for me, a uh, one for me, that omega-3 is actually also found in that pearl seal oil. There we see the powder produced out of the uh, perisil oil and this is quite unique so it actually tastes like oil and you get the oily taste of it uh, otherwise it's quite neutral it's neutral in taste but I'm quite sure uh, that the uh, omega-3 is within that powder and this is very very important because the human body needs omega-3 I am here on the stand of the Golden Flower Tea Oil Production Company and this company is uh, coming from Miaoli and I'm here with the owner. Lucen is producing quite some rare uh, oils uh, made from tea plants and camilla oils so to be used in salads and uh, also for cooking. Okay, I'm going to taste now the Ulang uh, tea oil. Um, mm. You can taste actually uh, a smoky type of flavor. You, take, uh, you taste the smoke, you taste the Ulang tea in it, and it's oily. So, it's a lovely oil. They're using the oil to make noodles and rice. Uh, they also they also uh, rub the oil into your skin to uh, for for beauty treatment. So I'm now trying uh, some noodles. Okay, right. She's making. Susan is now cooking some noodles, but she will serve with the oil. It's my first time to try tea oil on noodles. So. Uh, these are some. Mm. Nutty flavor. You can taste the beautiful oil. Um, okay. Mm. All right. Mushroom. And almond. And almond nuts, mushroom, and oil. Oh, it's beautiful. This is lovely ginger mixed with the oil. He's pouring the tea oil over, over the noodles and then mixes them into it. They look delicious. And now she's putting the spices. Mm. Oh, mixes them also into the noodles. Uh, this looks very, very interesting, and uh, I'm quite sure they will taste beautiful. Uh, soya sauce. Soya sauce. I love soya sauce. 
a little bit salt into the noodles with the soya sauce to mix it well. So now she puts some vegetables, cucumber, carrots onto the noodles. The noodles taste just like unbelievable. I haven't tasted noodles like this before. The oil really clings to the noodles and um, it gives it a fantastic flavor. Beautiful.